It's a 15 minute talk, so I'll stand up at the three minute mark. Uh, hi, my name is Theodore Hoya. I'm the principal investigator at Slips at One. I'm a rising junior at Suncoast High School, and I have been a member of the Wolfpack Chiefs development team since the fifth grade. Today, on behalf of my team, I'll talk about our plan to host the field, um, which I've been planning since the seventh grade, but now we're finally getting ready to fruition. So the Wolfpack Chiefs development team was formed in August of 2015. In order to gain experience with building satellites and go over the learning curve, we practiced our raspberry fight emulators tether and high speed balloons, and give a cat slide. Since then, we've launched two satellites, the Y-Sat-1 and the cat Sat one Both were one new Cube satellites that we launched with NASA's Cube Sat launch initiative. The y Sat one carried a biological payload to study extreme of bile bacteria, and the cat Sat one studies capacitor that's an alternative power source. Now we're going to launch a third satellite, which will actually be a hosted payload, the Slip Sat one which me and my team will be building, and hopefully launch it in the first quarter of next year. The Wolfpack Cube Sat development team has proven success with middle to university school students. They provide unique and distinctive STEM opportunities in real world aerospace for lower education students. When they meet, they meet both virtually and face to face due to the size of Florida, which is where we're based. And the branch that I'm the president of, Suncoast Aerospace, will be building the flip side one. Suncoast Aerospace, where the Suncoast Aerospace team, is about a 50 member strong group of high school students that are comprised of engineering, the engineering students and computer science students. We've been working on the satellite since the end of last year, throughout the summer, and we plan to keep on working on it deep into the first semester of the academic school year. So what is the FlipSat 1? The mission statement of the FlipSat 1 is providing space for the experience of students while researching the volatility of single event offsets with circuit boards, with, within circuit boards with respect to radiation methods. Single event upsets are radiation caused binary anomaly or radiation caused particles hit hardware. Beta, when beta particles strike hardware, it changes the electrical states of bits. When this happens, the binary code changes, a zero becomes a one, or one becomes a zero, which can then snowball into total or partial mission failure, or in the case of data, corruption or incorrect data. So the flip one will study three different methods of radiation protection for mitigation. We will study watchdog timers, physical radiation hardening, and error correcting code. Additionally, we will be testing on the microbit platform and we will be and we will be providing the microbit platform space by heritage. So microbits are a British broadcasting co corporation developed chip in conjunction with the Microbit Education Foundation. They were developed for the purpose of providing students within the United Kingdom uh, coding education opportunities and we will use them as our testing units. Within each microbit we will have a series of bytes which we would know what's on it. When we send it up, we'll set it before and we'll record that before. Each of the microbits will have varying radiation protection amounts and types. And each of these varying radiation protection amounts and types will have varying, will have varying circuit board count based on importance and also for, also for statistical significance. We will choose a partial and total circuit board count in order to achieve statistical significance or at least to qualify to calculate statistical significance in accordance with the student's key test. So our first method of radiation protection that we will be testing is physical protection. We chose polyethylene for our physical protection as, a, as it has a high hydrogen count. Hydrogen is a really good radiation protector as it captures incoming particles. And it's for this reason that polyethylene is a already prevalent method of radiation protection, typically for high altitude aircraft, but also for some space applications. Our microbits will be fully encapsulated by the polyethylene beyond axing structural holes. And our thicknesses that we'll be testing will be between 5 to 10 millimeters or 1 to 5 millimeters. It will be in 1 millimeter increments. We have not yet chosen which thickness to use as we're waiting for some volume specifications on our payload interface board. And then each testing group, which is uh, thickness, will have two current circuit boards assigned to it, not only for a larger data set, but also so that we can have some redundancy in case one of the microbits fails. Our second method of error correction that we will be using, of, our second method of radiation protection that we will be using is error correcting code. We chose to use parity checks in conjunction with forward error correction. Uh, parity checks work by taking the first seven bits, the last seven bits of a byte, and adding them up. This summation is either even or odd, and that even or oddity is called a parity. If the parity is even, then the parity bit, which is that eighth bit in the byte, or the first bit in that byte, will be uh, 
But if the parity is even, then the parity bit will be even. So if the parity is even, then the parity bit becomes a zero. And if the parity bit is odd, then the parity bit will be a one. Therefore, single bit upset occurs in the spike, or if multiple occur in an odd number, three, five, seven, then we will be able to detect, then we will be able to detect this as the parity bit will no longer match the parity of the summation. Once you've detected that a bike has had a single bit upset or multiple occur, we will use forward error correction, which means that we won't require further information from the ground. Uh, basically, every byte that we will use will be redundant and will have in your library of bytes that we are using, with varying amounts of bytes and varying like uh, variations of the bytes. Once this happens, similar to autocorrect, the computer will take the error byte and rewrite it to whichever the known byte is closest to. Our final method of radiation protection that we will be testing are watch clock timers. Here we will be efficiently testing them, and we will be testing two different methods of watch clock timers, electronic and physical watch clock timers. Watch clock timers are common methods of protection against single event upsets. Most, most famously, they were used on the Mars rover missions to allow them to operate for a long time without major software errors in the harsh radiation environment of space. The way a watch clock timer works is that once it registers, uh, a kick on it, it sends out a hard reset. In our case, our kicks will come from 